In this video, I show you how to diagnose Centipede video RAM issues just by sight. The video RAM layout for Centipede is very interesting. It consists of eight 2101 RAMs. Each RAM holds four bits of data. And there are four banks of RAM, each bank consisting of two chips and each chip provides one, we'll say, nibble, four bits of the eight bits at an address. And it's very interesting because rather than the RAMs being laid out from the beginning of the address to the end, the RAMs are interleaved. That is, from address 400 hex, is where it starts on Centipede, the RAM layout, the addresses in RAM space actually switch RAM banks every 16 addresses. And this is interesting because as you go through the address range from hex 400, and where those RAMs are mapped into, as you go through, every 16 addresses actually is accessing, accessing a different RAM bank. Addresses 400 through 400F is bank 1, 410 to 410F bank 2, 420 to 420F bank 3, 430 to 430F is bank 4. And you actually see this visibly on the centipede screen. You'll see bank you'll see columns starting from the left to right. The leftmost column bottom half is bank 1, then the leftmost column top half is bank 2. You move over and the uh, next column, the bottom half is bank 3 and the top bank 4. Then it starts all over again, one, bank 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, and so forth and so on through the entire tile RAM range. So it makes it very easy to actually tell which RAM bank is bad when you see columns of repeating characters on the screen. Centipede, when it turns on, immediately goes into the game unless you hit the test switch. However, most of the screen is black, and that is value zero, 00 in the memory locations. And often you'll see columns of repeating characters all over the screen. Where you have a series of a certain character on either the top or bottom of the screen every other column. What happens is this is a specific bank of RAM is reading incorrectly. That is the video hardware is actually accessing this data it's in the RAM and it's seeing not zeros. It's seeing some other data and that's not correct. But by looking at the columns that repeat that are not blank, you can tell what is bad. So here we know that is bank three, where those P's are occurring. Now bank one is chips K5 and K7. Bank two is L5 and L7. Bank three, M5 and M7 and bank 4, N5, and N7. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, okay great, so I know by looking at the screen now which bank it is. Well how do I know which chip it is? Well that's also pretty easy because each of the characters represents a hex number from 0 to FF. Now when the game boots up, again, it writes all zeros to all the addresses of that range. So almost all the spaces will actually be zero, zero. But if one of the chips will ba be bad, one of those nibbles, either the right hex digit or the left hex digit, will not be zero. And one of these characters should show. And the number you see here is the actual number that the video RAM is actually outputting. So if we see columns of P's, we know that the video RAM, rather than have storing or saying that it's zero at that address, is actually showing one zero hex. So that means that the data bit corresponding to, the, to make that number is stuck or is not outputting correctly. So that is actually the data bit four, which is the least significant data bit or of the RAM that controls the left side. 
So basically, once you find the bank, you know which two chips it is down to. There's either a chip in the 5 column or the 7 column. If you see one of the characters on the left here, that means a chip in the 4 column is bad. If you see a character in the right column here, that means the chip in column 2 is bad. Now what happens if you see a character that's not in either of these columns? That means both chips are bad. Because it's a, one of the numbers between 0 and FF where one of the Mo one of the nibbles is not set to zero. That means both chips are outputting something that's not zero, and they both should be putting out output four bits of zero. Finally, let's assume you pull the you find the RAM that's bad and you pull it, and you replace it, and you're still getting the error. That means it wasn't the RAM chip, but something on that data line corresponding to where the one bit is set is bad. For example, if you saw a P, that means data bit. Um, data bit 4 is not showing correct, which is, data, which is again, the data bit 0 on the output of the chip at N M5. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it was educational.